Challenge technology. Where are my friends from Challenge? Come on up front and join me on stage if you would. Guys, this is a two, am I right about that? A $2,000 prize to the best use of Challenge. Over the summer, I received an email from one of my former EC264 professors, Professor Liu, and it was about a hackathon that was going to happen at Butler University sometime in October. I got this email in July, and I was thinking to myself, why so early? But I also never did a hackathon before, so I went ahead and signed up, hoping to get some good experiences out of this. It's been lingering on my mind as I've seen many different YouTubers doing hackathons and having a great time and I really wanted some piece of that action so I was really looking forward to it. A week before the hackathon starts I was supposed to meet my team but apparently not a lot of people showed up so I came in empty-handed. So the hackathon festivities kicked off with a speech from the Indiana governor and a few representatives from different industries that are trying to inspire us to create our best solutions. And there were, I think, three different categories. We went with the one that was attainable for us since it was our first hackathon. So uh, our job, or I guess problem statement, was to increase fan engagement at sporting events. So that was a question or problem that we were trying to solve. And Basically throughout that night, we attended many of the information sessions held by the corporate sponsors. I'll put it up here somewhere. But um, it, it was for us to figure out like how to use um, each of their technologies and the things we can use from it and like make our projects better. And what ended up being really nice there was uh, we were able to meet our mentors right away. So every time we had a problem with our project, we would just run up and then just ask them like, hey, why is this code not working? Could you could you possibly give us a different approach to this solution we're doing? And for 48 hours, that was like, that was just magic. And some issues we encountered with creating our solution. So first off, um, our solution was we created a trivia app game um, called Spectivity. It's a play on the words spectator and activity. And uh, we just like kind of came up with it on the spot. And the name of the game is we made a trivia game based on um, awareness of the sport. So in this case, we targeted Pacers fans and incoming Pacers fans. So we've mainly had Pacer trivia based questions. And I just found some questions online and just made it into an app. And the web app uh, framework we used was React. Um, at first, my friends were trying to use Android Studio, and I think one of them also wanted to do Swift, but since most of us had Windows computers and uh, we only had one Mac user, that wasn't a viable option. And we also didn't go to the Android Studio route either, because um, from my experience, it could be such a mental drain and just like getting everything installed and um, I've, I've had a few experiences with Android Studio. I mean, I made like a little timer, but um, I, I don't know, I've, it felt really clunky to me when I used it. And I proposed the idea of why don't we use something like JavaScript or just a simple framework just to prototype things easily. And I showed them React and I showed them my Pokédex project that I made in Software Saturdays which ended up being really useful because um, we ended up using like the videos I that I used to make uh, the Pokédex viewer and it was completely free. We didn't have to like go to Udemy or pay anything. It was completely free. I was able to onboard all my team members quickly and that was the first night. After one day at Butler, uh, 
we got to work. I was heavily relying on caffeine and, and the snacks that they provided and basically got to work. So one problem that we faced was um, we tried making a timer. So the purpose of this timer was each of the questions would last for 10 seconds. And if the spectator wasn't able to answer it in those 10 seconds, it would cycle through and move on to the next question. Well, uh, in React, there are these things called states. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. If you are, um, yeah, they're really useful, but they're also like complicated at the same time. So I went through like countless tutorials to like kind of like set it up in a way where like if those 10 seconds are like over, then it cycles to the next question. Well, I ran into the problem where like um, it would go through the 10 seconds, but then it would like completely crash the program. So like every time it cycled to the last question, like the program would error out and that took like half a day to fix. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I, I really had like three people come in and just like figure out like what could be the issue and like finally one of my team members is Sean like literally went through it line by line and then just like made stuff and then tested conditions if they were making sense and he ultimately got it fixed and yeah that was that was very very clutch so I, I really thank him for that and another thing we wanted to like I guess uh hit on was just we really wanted to make our product look good despite its functionality. So like, we really went hard on the CSS. This is what took us the entire day to get. <laughs> look, at, look at how, look at how like spec it is, you know? Really just wanted a better user experience. And I've, I've been dabbling in front end development for like a year now. And uh, I really wanted to like, just, just use some of that energy in just creating this project and yeah, before you know it, that was like the end of the second day. And next day, we started our final preparations and we got everything set up and we've had a first round of presentations to do. So for the first round of presentations, we had people from the Indiana government uh, and from those respective industries and come in and just uh, walk through our presentation. And before this, we were all like, you know, we all had a really great experience and we're just here to get some experience and showcase our product. And we went ahead with our presentation, um, showcased and demonstrated our uh, web apps capabilities. And it turned out that they really liked it and they sent us to finals, which we were completely like ecstatic about because this was completely unexpected. Further preparations were made to like actually make our product be great. And um, that was when I realized that it's not about the app that matters or the functionality that matters, it's how you present it. And this was like the common theme for like many of the finalists that were presenting. Cause like many of them had like technologically sound solutions, but when it came to presenting, like there could be some work that needs to be done. And like a lot of the panelists that were judging them um, really felt that so i think that was one advantage we had over some of the other teams and we kept on using it and uh now i'm going to show you how our final presentation went so i hope you enjoy taking away team spectivity hello guys uh we're spectivity my name is namal uh hello guys i'm sid hi i'm ishan and my name is vibo so the problem that we're trying to solve is fan engagement at sports games. With Spectivity, we are able to have fans in a stadium compete with other people in the stadium to earn Pacer points. They solve trivia questions to earn these points and you can redeem them at the stadium venues or for prizes like jerseys. This will educate fans about the game and make them want to come back for more. We use the cloud uh, IBM Cloudant and Challenge API to take inputs and create these tournament brackets for fans to compete against each other. So we'll show you a live demo of our app.
All right, guys. Right now we're at the landing page, and this is particularly where the viewer first starts, and he or she or they will enter their name, seat number, and a password that will allow them to proceed with the trivia. So as we go, um, this is our trivia. There are four questions, and we basically have a system where if a person gets this question right, a PP point is earned. And if they miss a question or they don't answer it in time, it will cycle to the next question and it will show the score like so. So imagine, this is just one view. Now imagine if we had multiple competitions like this. This is where Challenge API Bracketology comes in. And this is a sample bracket that we created. And this is particularly important because we're trying to get uh, different sections of the stadium to compete as this is an ongoing event that happens throughout the sporting event and uh, will help uh, engage levels like we've never seen before. And finally, for our database management, we use IBM Cloudant, and we particularly use things like their name and other attributes to tie back to the brackets and get meaningful results to help increase the engagement levels. So why 5G? So we want to use 5G for our application so we can get instant feedback back to the fans and have quick data transfer. The nature of our app is fast paced because we have trivia questions that need to be solved within a time limit. So getting information back and forth quickly is essential. Having 5G uh, in a stadium can be easily integrated since it's an enclosed environment so you can have 5G to every fan in the stadium who has the app. So who is our target audience? People who don't know about the sports game can have a fun way of learning more about it and will have more involvement as the game progresses. Um, young kids coming to this game with their families can also grow up learning more about the game and will have interest in the game by creating connection with the game. Sports enthusiasts who are also looking to have more fun can kill time on our app and have more enjoyment throughout the sports experience. Experience with a player in something as simple as fantasy, like in my case. Steph Curry won me a lot of points one day, I started following more, and now I'm a Golden State fan after five years. And so maybe sometimes it'll just take an app like a trivia app to make you some money to start following the player more and get more into fandom and eventually earn the teams more uh, of a fan base. Thank you. Thank you very much, Team Spectivity. Next up, we have Nightwatch. So I don't know about you, but actually that was my favorite probably so far. That is a really ingenious solution there. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Michael. That was uh, my fine, uh, my favorite as well. Fan engagement, obviously. What I like about this is it's taken, you know, kind of two things that we already uh, know. Um, the idea of the, uh, of the, uh, um, uh, help me out with it. I'm, I'm losing it here. The uh, uh, trivia contest, yeah. right? The yeah. famous trivia contest, yeah. but then adding the challenge bracket. So the game right. within the game. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think, you know, people like you and I that may be uh, big sports geeks, but having a significant other or children associated with it, maybe aren't as passionate about it with us. You know, with, with myself, my significant other, we'd go there and she would only go to a baseball game for the hot dogs, right? Things like that. This is another good, good, fun way to engage for them, again, to, to their point in their presentation, how they can get some general basic knowledge of the sport or of the athletes. So really, and, and I like, you know, they definitely were working on, you know, hitting the, the partner integrations. Yeah. I mean, the database was cloud and um, I feel like they, they kind of resonated with 5G. They're definitely hitting the low latency. So. Yeah. So off to the main stage for the next uh, finals. Is, if you make that traditional change in the CI change, you can actually get the incline angle or the decline angle for the shoe, which is actually pretty good because we can use that data along with the first Nets API, which we're sending them the GPS coordinates from the GPS sensor. All right, thank you, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> yeah, so why we didn't get uh, Mr. Nelson to speak to the speaker is because we were afraid it would interfere with uh, the quality of the audio. Um, so now what Grace did was run the audio through uh, a speech to text converter and then the AI uh, analyzes the emotions of the text 
and what you should see in a couple of seconds, hopefully the Wi-Fi is fast enough, uh, is a word cloud that pops up on our website to, to kind of show you uh, what emotion Steph was trying to display during his uh, post-conference speech, post-game speech. All right, and, and there you go. Um, you can see it's a combination of fear What's up guys? We just finished with finals presentation. We made it to finals and uh, I think the presentation well, went well. Um, we, we probably we probably could have said a few things, but overall I felt like the vibe of the presentation was pretty nice. And um, I don't know, this is like my first hackathon. So I think I think it went pretty well. We're, we're waiting for like final results right now, basically. So I don't know, literally everybody from Purdue and like some of like the other teams from other schools, their their projects were really interesting. So we're gonna sit down for like 20 minutes or something and see who wins money. I don't know. Challenge technology. We're my friends from Challenge. Come on up front and join me on stage if you would. Guys, this is a two am I right about that? A two thousand dollar prize to the best use of Challenge. Are you ready? Spectivity! Let's go! First place in IOT goes to Athletic Kicks. Yeah,